Hey guys, welcome back to Rock's Kitchen. Mama Rocky here, and I have Sage with me. She just woke up from her nap not too long ago, so she's gonna join me for a little bit here. Um, today we are going to be making a red arbiata sauce. So um, honestly, this sauce, it, it goes so well by itself with pasta, or I like to add shrimp to it, or Italian sausage. Basically, this is just an awesome base red sauce for any pasta. And the cool thing is, is you can pre-make it and then put it in your fridge, pull it out when you need it. It's amazing. So first step is to take your olive oil and we're going to put about, I want to say about quarter to a half a cup, nice good amount of olive oil in there because we are going to, and I have it on about medium, medium heat here. We're going to add these garlic cloves. So this is, I want to say, two, no, it is two full garlic cloves that I peeled. All right, peeled fresh. I'm going to add these in. All right, nice and low to the pan. We'll step back a little bit, let those kind of roast. So we want to watch those carefully. We do not want to let them burn because nobody likes the flavor of burnt garlic. But we do want to get them nice and brown. Okay, Sagey? I'm going to put you down so that you can come play with your brother. Here we go. There we go. All right, so that I can watch these garlic over here without having to worry about them popping up. So we just want to keep an eye on them, keep them moving. You can hear them popping, so we don't want to burn them. We just want to, I'm going to lower the heat just a little bit. We just want to get them nice and toasty, okay? So this should take around, because we want to get them cooked all the way through to their core a little bit as well. So I'm going to roast them for about 10 minutes here, turning the heat down when necessary so that they do not burn. Kind of keeping them moving. I like to keep them around the edge of the pan so that they're not directly in the hot center here. And we'll just come move them around. So like I said, for about 10 minutes. So we'll turn the heat down. We'll come move them again in just one minute here. Next, I'm going to take these two cans of the San, Mar San Marzano. That's right, San Marzano. Um, this is the same can I buy all the time. So they're whole peeled tomatoes. I'm gonna drain both of them, all right? Because I just want the majority of the tomatoes, okay? Just want the tomatoes. So we're gonna drain these. All right. After we're done draining them, just gonna pop the top off here. I'm gonna be careful with these tops here once they're exposed, all right? Gonna take your food processor. Now you can use a blender um, or you can use a food processor or you can chop everything up and then throw it in the blender. If you have a really strong, sharp, sharp blade blender, then that, that should work just fine. Um, I find that using the food processor helps to chop up the garlic a little bit more easily. So that is what I'm using. So we're gonna pour these tomatoes right into the food processor. All right, this one can be drained a little bit more. All right. And we're gonna pour the rest of these tomatoes in there. All right, so next what we're going to do is we're gonna pop the lid back on here. We're just gonna pulse this to chop up the tomatoes. All right, easy enough, right? Even the tomatoes smell good, but I love tomatoes, so that's easy. All right, so now what we're gonna do Keep those moving. They're almost all brown and toasty. They smell so good. I think the thing I love most about this pasta sauce is the garlic. So good. You're also gonna want some fresh basil, crushed red pepper. This is optional. I don't put as much as I'd like to because DJ, my husband, he can't, can't 
to take the heat. But I can't. <laughs> but we won't put too much in there just because I know he likes this sauce too. And then you're also gonna want whole fennel seeds. So we need to chop these and then we're also gonna shred some of this um, fresh basil here to go in the sauce. Let's check on our garlic, it's just about done. Yep, all right. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna take the garlic out, I'm gonna put it back in this bowl so that I can transfer it over to our processor. It smells so good. So this is about the brown color that you would like to see on this garlic here. Right. Go ahead and leave the excess oil in the pan. So we're gonna add these garlic directly into the food processor. Right. Okay, now we're gonna pulse the garlic in the food processor here. Now I can see it starting to chop up. We're just going to keep doing it. Now you'll start to see some of the chunks of garlic here. And when you see like a little bit bigger chunk, I mean, that doesn't really bother me in the sauce because I love garlic, but we want to kind of make sure we get those all trimmed up. That smells so good. I can smell the roasted garlic. So we're just gonna pulse a few more times. I see a few more big chunks here. We are going to add some wine to this sauce, but after we put it in the, and I always choose a Sauv Blanc, either a Sauv Blanc or like a Chianti. If I was using red, you can use white or red in this sauce. So we'll do that. So this looks like it's all chopped up. So I'm going to pour the sauce directly on this um, hot oil that I have over here. All right, nice and slow here. Ooh, not gonna put the, not gonna cook the blade, that's for sure. We're gonna, we should be careful when doing that. <laughs> All right. All right, so I had turned it down to low heat, so we're gonna let that simmer for just a second as we start to add our seasonings here. So as that's on simmer, we are going to take our fennel seeds and we're going to chop them. Now chopping fennel seeds is, is not fun. It's, it's kind of like, they're so small, but we're chopping them because we want the flavor to get out, right? So we want, so we're gonna do about two teaspoons of fennel seeds. These smell really good too, they are strong. So what we wanna do is chop them. I mean, they're already really tiny. We just kinda want to open them up. And the best way I find to do that is to hold the top of the blade down. Cause if you're just chopping, they're gonna go all over the place, right? So trying to keep them and we do it nice and Slow. Now they don't have to be, I mean, they're already tiny, so they don't have to be perfect, but we just want to dice them a little bit so they're kind of crushed. All right, that should be good enough. Now I know I didn't get all of them, but I got a good majority so that I can really smell them as I'm chopping them more. So we're gonna throw this in. All right. And then we're gonna do some Crushed red pepper. Now, normally I would, literally you wanna do this to taste. So you don't want to do too much cause this stuff is pretty strong. So I would do about a teaspoon to two teaspoons depending on how hot you want yours. I'm literally going to just put a dash just to give it a little bit of heat. All right, but not over amount of heat because like I said, my husband will, will not eat it. Well, he'll just, he'll struggle, <laughs> he'll struggle. That's okay though, that's okay. I can always add more to the side, right? If I need more. All right. So 
we're gonna go ahead, get our basil ready. Can never have too much basil. I don't know if you guys notice, if you watch a lot of my other videos, I, I just, I use basil for everything. Okay, I'm gonna add in about a quarter of a cup of white wine. Okay, cook that down. And when you're using wine, you wanna make sure you don't use sweet wine, okay? You just wanna use a dry, a dry white wine. Oh, let's wash this first. Got a lot going on in my sink right now, guys. That's pretty much usually what's, what, what happens. Now we're gonna wait to add this basil in for a little while. Gonna let that fennel seed, and then I'm also gonna add in some salt and pepper to the sauce as well. So we'll let this basil sit here. Wow, that smells so good. Okay, salt. Salt and pepper to taste. So I don't want to tell you guys how much salt to put because it is optional. Salt's always optional, but I mean, hey, it's gonna really make the sauce. So what I like to do is add it, stir it, let it sit for a little bit, and then taste as I go along. I think that one of the really key things to making something um, your own and part of it being homemade is you know, obviously following recipes is amazing, but you want to cook to your taste profile, right? So I think that tasting along the way as you're making something, especially, sorry, Sean, especially if it's something new, um, you want to taste as you're, as you're going, right? That already tastes really good. Okay. All right. We're going to turn up the heat just a little bit there, and then we're going to add in our fresh basil. My daughter is over there. She's saying mama. <laughs> All right. Okay, now we're just going to let this simmer and we're going to come back to it in about 30 minutes so that all those flavors can seep in together. Okay guys, so we left for about 30, 45 minutes. We let the sauce simmer. It smells incredible um, in the entire kitchen. I can smell it. So we're gonna do a quick taste test to make sure we don't need to add any salt. Um, I had added about a tablespoon of salt before we let it simmer. So now we're gonna just taste it. Make sure we don't need anything, anything else to it. It's perfect. It is perfect. And so, like I said before, I will honestly eat this without any meat. Um, so that does make it a vegetarian dish. I will just make some linguine pasta, throw this sauce over it, sprinkle some fresh Parmesan cheese, and it is literally a little bowl of heaven. Yep, I love this sauce. And I honestly think that it gets better like as it sits in the pot. The longer it sits in here and simmers, the more the flavors just come out. So with that being said, we will go ahead and get to making, I got some uh, hot water going right now so I can make this pasta, but thanks for tuning in guys. Make sure you like and subscribe down below and stay tuned for the next video.